Hello, and welcome to Chapter 10. We are going to start with Section 10.6, which, de which deals with the parametric equations. Up until now, we've graphed single equations with two variables, x and y. Now, in this section, we're going to see where it's sometimes useful to introduce a third variable to represent a curve in the plane. Now, let's think about this for a second. The path an object follows that is being propelled into the air at a 45 degree angle. If the initial velocity of an object is 48 feet per second, then the equation of that object is given by y equals a negative x squared divided by 72 plus x. This is what we call the rectangular equation. Now this equation only tells you where an object has been not when it was at a certain point. So to find out when, um, we're going to have to introduce a third variable called t, and this is what we call a parameter. Now, a parametric equation is when x and y are written as functions of t. And these right here are just two examples. So when we have x equals 24 times the square root of 2 times t, um, this is called the parametric equation for x, and then this y equals a negative 16t squared plus 24 times the square root of 2t. This here is called the parametric equation for y. And from these two equations, we can see that at time t equals 0, our object is going to be at 0, 0, because if I plug in a 0 in for t, I'm going to get 0 for x. And if I plug a 0 in for t in the y equation, I will also get 0. If I plug in a 1 for t, then we'll see we get the coordinate point 24 square roots of 2 and 24 square roots of 2 minus 16. Okay, and we can continue to do this for any point uh, or any t value. Now, when we graph this, the graph is what we call a plane curve. The definition of a plane curve says that if both functions f and g are continuous, and remember, continuous just means that you can trace it and not lift up your pencil. Um, if they're continuous functions of some variable t on a given interval, then the set of ordered pairs is a plane curve, which we're going to define as c. And the equations are given right here, where x and y are both functions of t, and these are called parametric equations. And t is actually the parameter. When we go to sketch parametric curves, um, we, we treat them just like a regular rectangular coordinate. We're still going to plot in an xy plane. Okay, we're still going to find the coordinate point xy by a given parameter of t. And when we plot the points, we're going to plot them in order of increasing value of t. Now, when we do this, this is going to actually trace the curve in a particular direction, and that direction is called the orientation of the curve. And we do have to indicate that on our graph, and I will show you how to do that here in just one second. So example one says to sketch the curve represented by x equals t and y equals a negative 2t. And we're going to look at the interval from negative 2 to a positive 2. Now if you notice over to the left here, I've created a table that has values of t that go from negative 2 to 2, which was given by my interval and I have x and y. And to fill this in, I'm just going to plug in my values of t into my x equation and then plug those same values in to my y equation. So when I go in and I plug a negative 2 in to the x equation, I get a negative 2. I plug negative 1 and we get negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to do the same thing for my y equation. If I plug a negative 2 in for t, negative 2 times 2 is a positive 4. Neg when I plug a negative 1 in, I get a positive 2, 0, negative 2, and negative 4. 
So to plot my points, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to start with the smallest t value and then go in increasing order because this is going to create our orientation or direction that our curve is going to follow. So I'm going to start at a t value of a negative 2 and when I do that, I see that I have the coordinate point, negative 2, 4, so I'm going to plot that, go negative 2, positive 4. Then I've got negative 1, 2, I have the point 0, 0, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 4. So when you graph these, I see that I end up with what should be a straight line. And because I'm going from this top corner up here down to this point here, I have an orientation, and I'm going to indicate that by drawing little arrows along the way to show that this is the direction in which I'm going. So, arrows indicate the orientation, and you do have to include the area or the arrows when you are graphing these. The next thing we're going to do is look at how to eliminate the parameter. In other words, we want to find the graph of a rectangular equation that is the same thing as the parameter or the parametric equation. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start out with our parametric equation. We're going to take that and we are going to solve for t in one of the equations. It doesn't matter if it's your x equation or your y equation, but once you have t isolated in one equation, you're then going to substitute it into the next equation so that you can solve for one of the variables and then you'll have your rectangular equation. So let's look at example 2 to see how we would do this. Example 2 says to sketch the curve represented by the equations x equals 1 divided by the square root of t and y equals to, is equal to 2t squared and we're going to sketch it by eliminating the parameter and adjusting the domain. So let's start out by isolating the variable t in one of the equations. Now, it doesn't matter which equation you use. So for now, I think I'm going to take the x equals 1 divided by the square root of t, and I'm going to isolate that t. So to do that, I'm going to square both sides, and that gives me x squared equals 1 divided by t, I'm going to multiply both sides by t, divide by x squared, and I'll get t is equal to 1 divided by x squared. So now that I have t by itself, I'm going to substitute this into my y equation. Now your y equation says y equals 2t squared, so this becomes y equals 2 times 1 divided by x squared, and that quantity is being squared, or end up with 2 times 1 divided by x to the fourth. Now, in the original problem, it said to sketch this by eliminating the param parameter, which we just did, and adjusting the domain. The Adjusting the domain piece comes from the fact that when you look at your original equations up here, okay, the equation for x is true only when values of t are greater than 0. Because if you recall, the square root of a number, ha the number has to be a value that is greater than 0 or equal to 0. However, in this case, because it's occurring in the denominator, it has to be greater than 0. So, because the value of t has to be greater than 0 in this original function, that tells me that we have to restrict the domain of x to positive values only. So now to plot this, I'm going to go ahead and create my table. And when I plug in my values for x, I see that I end up with so when I go to plot these points then, and you can do this in your calculator since we did create um, the equation right here and put it in rectangular format, you can actually type this in your calculator to graph. Um, and you'll see that you get a graph 
that looks something like this. It's going to get really close to your x-axis and the orientation then would be in this direction. I will show you um, how to graph on your calculator in the parametric mode. Um, however, right now you're going to have to convert everything over into um, rectangular equations until I can show you how to do this. Now example 4 is a case where the parameter doesn't always have to be time. Sometimes it can actually be an angle or theta. So in this example, we are going to sketch the curve that's represented by the equation x equals 2 cosine theta and y equals 2 sine theta and we're looking at the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So to sketch these by eliminating the parameter, I'm going to rewrite this as the cosine of theta is equal to x divided by 2 and the sine of theta is equal to y divided by 2. And I got that by isolating the cosine theta piece and the sine theta piece from each of the um, parametric equations. And if you think back to chapters 4 and 5 when we talked about trig and trig identities, you have an identity that says that the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta is equal to 1. Now we're going to use that trig identity and we're going to plug in what we have for cosine and sine and for cosine we have x divided by 2 that quantity squared plus y divided by 2 that quantity squared equals 1. So if we simplify this we end up with x squared divided by 4 plus y squared divided by 4 is equal to 1. And if I get rid of my denominator, we end up with x squared plus y squared equals 4, which is the equation of a circle with a radius equal to 2. And now to sketch that, I'm just going to come up here, draw my circle. I have radiuses or a radius of 2 all around. And the orientation of my parametric equation does happen to follow the counterclockwise direction. As a side note, when we eliminate the parameter, this is really only to help us graph a curve. Um, we still need to have the parametric equations when we're trying to determine the position, direction, and speed at a given time of a particle. So when we eliminate parameters, you should only be doing that so that you can graph or sketch the curves. Now our first few examples included um, trying to sketch a graph represented by a set of parametric equations. Now for our next example we're going to reverse this process and be given a graph and we want to find the set of parametric equations. So let's look at example 5. It says find the set of parametric equations to represent the graph of y equals 4x minus 3 using now part A says that we want to use t equals x. So to write our set of parametric equations, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write x equals t, and then we're going to substitute this in for every x value up here in this equation. So that's going to give us y equals 4 times t minus 3 and we are done right here. Now for part B, it says that t equals 2 minus x. So to come up with my x equation, I'm just going to take 
this equation here and isolate x. So I end up with x equals 2 minus t. And then I'm going to take this value that I just solved for right here and plug that into this equation right here to solve for my y. So let's go ahead and do that. I have y equals 4 times x, which I'm going to replace with 2 minus t, and then I'm going to subtract 3 from that. So when I simplify, I have 8 minus 4t minus 3, which gives me a negative 4t plus 5. So the set of parametric equations for part b then, when I write them all together, would be x equals 2 minus t and y equals 5 minus 4t. And there you have it. Have a good day.